What's up, besties? It's your girl Morgan here, and you're listening to Your Internet Best Friend. What is up, besties? I am so excited today. We're going to be talking all things traders. Um, If you are not watching it, it's on Peacock. Um, You need to be watching it, so get out under the rock that you're living under. It is so good. I'm so addicted, and this is coming from a girl who does not really watch TV. I don't love it. Not a reality TV girl, even though I was on it, but I'm addicted. So I figured I had to bring on a very special guest to talk about last night's episode because we had a massive cliffhanger. So joining me is the number one enemy of the traders, the leader (laughs) of the Peter Pals. Sorry, I had to say it, but the one and only Peter. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Morgan. It's good to be here. Appreciate it. I'm so excited to chat. Oh my God. First, I have to ask, last night, the episode, we had a massive cliffhanger. It was a huge episode for you. I mean, you are essentially the star of the show. Um, I don't want to go that far, but... Yeah, you know what, Peter, but I think between you and Phaedra, and I say Parvati, you guys are really carrying this show. It's been so entertaining. So how are you feeling after last night's episode? Wow. Um, yeah, it was an episode. It, it brought me back to say the least. Um, but honestly, it just, it got me hyped. Th- those yeah. round table ceremonies were so intense and, but also like just so fun. Like I really in- enjoyed it and like kind of putting myself into that kind of environment because everyday life, you really, you don't mm-hmm. experience that kind of thing. So yeah, it brought me back. Obviously, I had made some choices earlier in the game that kind of put me in the position that I'm in currently. And, you know, I'm okay with that. I I made my choices and I'm sticking by them and um, I'm just fighting like hell to to make it another day. Oh, my gosh. Well, I know you can't give any spoilers, but I'm just going to tell everyone, the listeners, my prediction. Peter, you can like wink casually, but maybe don't do that because you'll get in trouble. But I think (laughs) I think you're staying. I think MJ is a lot smarter than people give her credit. I think that she's on to Phaedra. And even though she's kind of in this like housewife click, she's kind of with the girls. I think she's going to make the right move. Um, And spoiler alert, if you haven't watched yet, it really comes down to a tiebreaker. MJ is the vote between Peter and Phaedra. So Peter, I have high hopes in you. I think you're staying. I think, you know what, I'm going to actually make you text me. I don't know if you can, but like, I want to know. I think you're making it to the end, but that's just me. Um, So we will see. But my question is, you, my friend, I I'm impressed. You know, you I feel like a lot of people you came from The Bachelor and I'm not trying. No, no offense to you, but I didn't have a lot of high hopes, you know, for the gaming aspect. I was like, you know what? Peter's going to come in. He's probably going to play it safe, kind of like how Sandra's playing it, you know, under the radar. But you went kind of balls to the wall. You are so vocal. You're gaming so hard. So my question is, did you always have this plan going in? Like, was this your strategy from the get-go? If you're like, okay, I'm not a trader, so I'm just going to be the loudest person in the house? No. And and again, <laughs> so obviously I come from the Bachelor World environment. Those are two completely different shows. Yeah. And, you know, I got the opportunity to go to Traders. I, I had seen the first or part of the first season, obviously binged it right when I got the call. And I was like, holy shit, I get to go do this. This is <laughs> this is going to be a time. Um, but I had no experience in a gaming environment. So, like, I was a rookie essentially going into this. I think pros and cons to that. Obviously, I think it helps me, at least in the beginning, kind of fly under the radar. No one has any game tape on me. No one knows how I play the game. Um, so I tried to use that to my benefit. And I think for me, I look back and there was a, a very definitive point where I saw my gameplay change. And once I made that choice, I just, I, I was committed and I had to stick to it. And I was back with the, um, with the Bergy, the shield block. Mm-hmm. And at that point, obviously I kind of put my neck out there and I got very vocal. And I remember thinking, I'm like, shit, is this too early in the game to kind of make this move? Is it, you know, we have a a long way to go still. Um, Can I keep, you know, being kind of a target on my back? Is there a viable way to still make it to the end? And ultimately, I decided, yes, there was. Obviously, you have the shields always available at most missions. Um, But I think the whole aspect of being loud, that ended up becoming my strategy. 
And I okay. felt like, okay, as long as now I'm the loudest in the house, if I keep the heat on the traders and I'm accurate and I keep kind of pinpointing every single one, that in itself is going to be my protection. And if I, you know, if I'm so loud on someone and then the very next night I'm banished, that's kind yeah. of a red flag. That's a little too obvious for everyone else looking at the traders like, hmm, this guy came and put so much heat on you and now he's gone. So I kind of just realize, okay, being loud, aggressive, that's my gameplay, and I'm going to do that to the very end. Yeah, you're you're faithful to the end, Peter, like you said. Um, and I have I to... Know. I have to applaud you. And it's funny because so I came from Big Brother, so I'm in the challenge. So I'm used to this like co competition reality TV. But then you have you on The Bachelor and then there's The Housewives. I almost feel like you guys have more of an advantage because right, you, so you haven't played the game before. And I will say, I think a lot of Big Brother players, a lot of challenge players, they, and look, I could be wrong, but as someone who was in the world and I also dated someone who was on reality TV for 20 years. So like, I actually do know they do things performatively and I think they do it for the best TV. Whereas okay. you were actually playing the game for the people and with integrity. So I actually feel like that was an advantage for you. I think a lot of, especially okay. like, like the challenge people were like, Dan, it's like he wanted to be a trader because it's good TV and, you know, gaming and you want to, you know, connive and create chaos and do people dirty. But you're like, you know what? I'm a faithful. I'm going to do these people right. We're going to make it to the end. And I actually think that's working for you. And that also leads me into you had the chance to be a trader and you said no. Um, yes. One, walk me through that. What was your reasoning? And do you regret that decision? I don't regret it. Um, I've had obviously a ton of time to think. You see kind of reaction from the public too. Be completely honest, I didn't think it would be as. I mean, I guess I maybe knew it'd be a big storyline, obviously, but I didn't think it kind of blow up in the way that it did. Just being very honest, I get to that couch or that chair, mm -hmm. I have the recruitment letter. By the way, I wanted to keep that so bad. And I try to walk out after that room with the letter no. to actually have physical evidence. And they unfortunately <laughs> didn't let me have it because I'm like, this would be so perfect. Perfect. Um, but they didn't let me do that, unfortunately. But I just, initial thought, I see that and I'm like, God damn it, they, this is the perfect play for the traders in that point because either way, there's pros and cons now mm -hmm. and for me to accept or for me to deny. And initially, I just, I had felt we had so much momentum with, you know, my crew people that I really, really trusted. And I was like, I just don't want to blow this up right now. I know the benefits of being a trader. I understand that. I thought we had a really good game plan and now they were going to force me to switch that up. I was going to have to now become a, a crazy actor. And, you know, sure, maybe I could have done it convincingly, maybe not. Um, but I just, I was, to the honest answer, I was having so much fun with, with my crew there. I didn't want to turn on them. And I wanted to still play that same way. I also was thinking strategically, it makes no sense for me to take this recruitment letter because mm -hmm. it's going to come out. Obviously, there was a recruitment because there was no murder. Anyone with a logical brain is going to think, who are the traders going to target for a recruitment? Smart. Me. I was the one that had just called out two of the traders. Um, I, to be honest, I actually, which the viewers don't see, I had called out Phaedra way, way before at the round table when Dan okay. had, had put that on her. They never show that. Um, but Phaedra and I already had had some beef going on just because of me putting heat on her. And so I'm like, this just, it makes too much sense. If someone's thinking, okay, who would the traders have recruited? I thought all roads would have led to me. And I'm like, okay, either way now, if I'm going to get heat from this, I might as well still play the game the way that I've been playing. I feel confident. I have a plan. Um, because I think it just, it was too obvious that I was going to be the recruit. Yeah. I mean, that makes total sense. And, but I then on the flip side, you say no. And then if you would have said yes, it kind of would have kept you in the game longer because now, you know, you're flipping roles, you're a trader, and now people have to figure you out. So yeah, maybe they would have, but you had to know that you were, you know, on the chopping block. You were public enemy number one for the trader. So was that running through your head of like, I'm going to say no, but I might be going home and leaving this game, you know, the next night? It, I was <laughs> terrified. I didn't quite. Also, I guess I got to put this out there. And this is on me. Uh, I should have read the, the rule book a little bit closer. But 
I didn't realize that traders had an unlimited amount of recruitments. I thought they had a, a limited amount and once they use those, they uh -huh. were done. So that was also going into my mind. I'm like, okay, I can now force the traders to waste the recruitment that they're not going to get back. Obviously, that wasn't the case. They they're able to recruit unlimited, but in that moment, and again, that's on me. I thought that I was also hurting their game because they were wasting, and they wasted in a way, but not the way the full extent that I thought I was providing to them. Um, okay. So that was unfortunate learning that, but I didn't even know either that. After I left that room and I declined, I didn't know that they couldn't recruit that night either. So I'm just like, please, 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 like, don't murder me. Don't murder me. Like that, me that would have just been such a bad way to go out. Um, um, so, real quick, speaking of now I'm like, okay, say I'm a, on traders. I don't know. Do you get a rule book or they're just like, you know what? Show up, figure it out. Like watch the game if you want. I don't know. Like, or is there like a binder of rules and they're like, here, read it if you want. Yeah, we we get a rule book at the very beginning, and then the traders are. What's that? Did you read it? Oh hell yeah! Okay, yeah, I was just checking. And again, I'm that's on me. I I just didn't interpret it the way I should have okay. with the way that recruitments work. But the traders too, they get their own rule book that unless you're a trader, you're not privy to that information. Um, with uh, with also with poverty and with fader at that point, going through my head, I'm like. I just, they're going to, if I accept this, mm -hmm. they're going to now turn on me immediately. They're going to throw me under the bus. It's going to help their game because they're going to get some credibility with the rest of the castle. Look, Peter actually was a trader and keep smoke off of them. So it just, I really, really thought about it. And there was just too many reasons to say no. Um, yeah. But then hindsight, it's like, yeah, it would have been fun as hell to, uh, uh, to, to really play. It really would have. Well, here's my hope for you, Peter, because I feel like you've impressed people so much being on the traders in this like gaming environment. I think season three, they pull what they did to Kate and maybe they bring you back. Maybe they bring you back as a little twist and you get to play as a trader. Hey, I appreciate you putting it out there. I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, you say you're a big brother, you know, alum and all that. I am hooked on this kind of gameplay. This is, I had the time of my life. Peter. It was so fun. Peter, I think you should go on Big Brother. I would actually love to see you in that kind of environment because then everyone's scheming. Everyone's gaming so hard. I think you should yeah. do it. You know what? We're going to put hey. it into the universe. Maybe they're listening. I'm a yes man. Let's do it. Well, real, real quick side note before I get into more trader questions. Did you know, speaking of Big Brother, because the fandom's going to be listening to this, did you know about Dan and Janelle previous to going in the house? No. Had really? no idea. Okay. I, I'm kind of like you. I, you know, I've done a reality show. I'm not the biggest TV show watcher. Honestly, mm -hmm. all I watch on TV is sports. Um, but so I had no idea who they were. I didn't know their legacy, how good they were. And I found all this out kind of like through the show janelle and i we'd gotten close and she was kind of filling me in on dan and like how dangerous he is how good of a player he is you know the best i guess he's crowned the best player to play yeah. um but i i think the only person i knew when i showed up to the castle was max uh from dancing oh, with the stars okay. and i think that helped because i had no preconceived notions no intimidation from anybody actually and i had known a phaedra as well but not not as well as max uh, but yeah, Dan and, and uh, Janelle, no. Wow. Which is just wild because I feel like, I mean, it could have helped or hurt it. Like you really don't know yeah. anyone who knew about Dan. I feel like immediately my brain would be like, no matter what, I don't care if he's being so kind and he actually is a faithful. I'd be like, you're a traitor. Done. Get him out immediately because he's just so good. But hey, you guys did get him out. Um, so it's funny too. Yeah, we were, um, we had a little press day and I was, it was my first chance to really kind of talk with Dan and I think the episode had just aired and I didn't realize in this moment it's happening. We're at the pool table and he was really trying to like, I guess, interview me at that point if he wanted to pick me as a recruit instead of poverty. And I was like, dude, I wish you would have picked me then. Cause yeah. at that point I had no like allegiance. I had no like, you know, trust in anyone else. I would have 100% have said yes. Um, it didn't, it didn't happen that way, but we had a good little laugh. Oh uh, man. I know. I would have loved to see you in a trader role, but you know what? You know, number Peter Pals, the, the leader of the Peter Pals. I laugh every time <laughs> Phaedra says that. Um, you're doing good. But let's let's hypothetically think, because in this last episode, we see Kate joins Phaedra as a traitor. Alan gives his ultimatum. She picks either to join or she gets murdered. Now, let's say mm -hmm. it didn't happen how it happened, and that was you. Now, you either 
leave the game immediately or you join the traders, what would you do in that situation? That's a good point. Actually, that's what I was I meaning. Uh, I had a little brain fart. I, when I had rejected the initial letter, I did it for those reasons, but I also assumed, okay, I think this won't be my last recruitment offer. And cause I knew that there was an ultimatum that one you have to, okay. um, at that point, I mean, you can't, what's the point of playing the game if you're just going to, if you're just going to leave? Like I legitimately right. thought we had a chance to win with the group of faithfuls I had. And that's why I said, no, if, if I was going to be forced to leave, I mean, you shouldn't have showed up to play the game then if you're just right. going to say no to that. So, okay. So you're faithful to the end, unless there's an ultimatum. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you gotta, yeah. you, gotta you gotta keep, keep playing. playing. You can't roll over and die. Ah. Besties, listen up. It's 2024. And as I mentioned on a past podcast episode, hot girls do not skip meals. They just don't. It's so important to fuel your body properly, which is why I'm about to change your whole entire life by introducing you to Factor Meals. Literally 10 out of 10, my freaking favorites. Factor's delicious, ready to eat meals make eating better every single day easy. You'll never skip lunch again, I promise, no matter how busy you are, because Factor is delivered to your door and they're so easy to make. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition packed add ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. They also have two minute meals, lots of snack options, smoothies. Y'all, literally, they have it all. It's insane. Also, it's less expensive than takeout and way better for you because every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. It's fast, easy, and most important for me, it's flexible. You can choose from six to 18 meals per week. I personally do the six, and you can pause or reschedule anytime. If you're like, oh my God, yes, I need to try. Well, guys, you're in luck, my friends. Head to factormeals.com slash internet BF50. Use code internet BF50 to get 50% off. That's code internet BF50 at factormeals.com slash internet BF50 to get half off. Let's talk. Um, let's just talk biggest mistakes. Let's, you know, let's, yeah. let's run through. You've done so much, right? You've made it this far. You made such a splash, but you're on the chopping block. We end with this cliffhanger. Yeah. We don't know if you're staying or you're leaving. You've done a lot in the game with like the shields and the Bergy move and all the things, but you've also had secret meetings that people really weren't a fan of. Um, you know, Phaedra's calling you out, which by the way, I got to ask you about how you felt about that. Um, but looking back on your <laughs> gameplay, you're watching it. What were you like, damn, I wish I would have done that differently. Okay. First off, can I ask you a question? Yes. In these competitive game show environments, is it really that abnormal to try to have private conversations? Like in Big Brother, like, is that not a thing? Um, okay, or are you so like it, always out in the open? No, in Big Brother, it is a thing, but... You're also, and correct me if I'm wrong, you guys don't get a game that long, right? I think no. I listened to an interview where it's like, you got to talk for only short amounts of time. So yeah, exactly. in Big Brother, we are gaming 24-7. You can game at three in the morning. You can oh. game right when you wake up. There's always cameras on you. So it's very, very easy to have okay. secret meetings because you're in this big house and some people are sleeping, some people are showering. So it's a lot easier to go sneak off. Whereas I feel like it was probably very difficult for you guys. If you had limited time to have private meetings. Okay. That, that makes sense. That's honestly a lot more of my style too. Yeah. We, unfortunately we, you know, you, you film an episode in a day, so everything's very condensed that is and you wild. get, it's, it's a lot. And you know, you get released from breakfast, you have 45 minutes of reality, an hour of reality. And so you know, I totally see how you talk about mistakes could definitely, definitely maybe was a mistake on my part, but it's like, you got to pick the lesser of the two evils. Okay. Don't get any information talked about any plans formulated and just be everyone's best friend and, and just shoot the shit and like, you know, whatever, or take that time and make the most of it and try to come up with strategy because we had such limited time. And, you know, I think mistake wise, Again, when there was that one scene, I think with Phaedra and Jay, they came in again, it wasn't the audience that know it, but I'd already called Phaedra out at that mm. point. So I'm like, I can't, 
have her listen to this conversation. Like we can waste this conversation and hey, Phaedra, come on in. Like, how's the weather? Like, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> like, we're not, we're not going to like have a productive conversation. Um, and so I just chose to take advantage of my time. And I was always like, why isn't every, anyone else like talking game? Like, why are they so concerned about like what we're talking about? Like, go, go strategize and, and think something up. But yeah, they wanted to be in our convos. And I think that that could be a mistake looking back, you know, kind of shunning the group. It was never my intention. I was just trying to be productive with my time and, mm-hmm. and come up with a way to win. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's interesting that you say that because us as viewers, we don't realize you only get an hour to game. So now that you say that, yeah. I'm like, okay, it does make sense because even watching it, it's like everyone has like this frantic energy. And I'm always like, yeah. what, you know, why, why you guys, you're in a big old castle. You got all the time in the world. Why don't you chill out, play it safe, you know, be a little more secretive, but if you only have an hour to figure shit out. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm Peter, I'm on your side with this one. Um, I think I would um, be doing the it. same thing of like, we got to figure this shit out. Like, get it together. So that's interesting. Um, but let's talk about, let's talk about, so rewind to this episode. We've got the, the crossbows and the mirrors. And my first yeah. question, how long you guys one? you guys are not very <laughs> we good. Sucked at that. <laughs> you guys are not very good with the crossbow stick with your day jobs. Don't go into <laughs> archery. Um, but I think everyone wants to know how long did, were you actually filming that? A long time. And I was honestly shocked that we even finished the mission. Like it really? was that bad. Like they have, <laughs> you had to cut so much. Like they showed how bad we were, but we were like 10 times worse. Oh, and okay. it was just shot after shot. Um, to be honest, they were very like archaic kind of crossbows. Like the, every shot, it wasn't consistent where you, you, you know, hold, if you, even if you didn't touch the arrow, two shots aren't going to go the same way. Like mm-hmm. the all like little darts were like, chipped and it was the accuracy was tough so that's to our defense okay but it probably took i don't know we were probably there for like two hours i would say damn trying to trying to get those yeah two hours some money lost some drama started in that so i'm curious because we hear sandra makes the comment of like okay go for trishel but then phaedra is actually the one who goes for trishel and that's kind of the move I feel like that really put the target on Phaedra, which I, that's what we're seeing as viewers. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that gave her the evidence of like, oh my God, that's when CT was like, she's a traitor, all this. But I'm watching it and I'm like, but Sandra said it first. So my mind as someone, if I was like, if I was a faithful, I would be like, oh, well, Sandra said it. So I'm curious, you guys were there. Did people pay attention to what Sandra said? Or were people already so on to Phaedra that it didn't matter what anyone else said? It was just like, that was, you know, the cross or I don't know, the, fr- the, the nail on the coffin. There we go. And the coffin, Analogies yeah. are hard. <laughs> it's early. It's early. Yeah. Um, honestly, yeah, going back to that, at least for me, I can speak on, I never, I never had suspicion of Sandra. I knew okay. Sandra would... I, I didn't ever believe she was um, initially chosen as a trader. I knew that if she was ever recruited, she would 100% say yes. Okay. And knowing that, okay, I had had a wasted recruit, so it wasn't me. Um, we already knew that part, like we knew there was only two recruits at that point. So I, I knew that Sandra hadn't had an opportunity yet to be a trader. So I never took much notice of that. It was just, it was everything was honed in on Phaedra. And I was kind of shocked that she decided to like put that target on her back like mm-hmm. she could have just stayed status quo and you know it was cool that ct picked up on it honestly i have one of the players i i think i respect most from the game just like their game is ct that guy yeah, he, he knows what Peter, he's doing he's a genius he is an evil genius as someone who has like been around him and played the game and done the challenge this yeah. man, I'm like, CT for president, just actually, no, our country would go down in flames. But <laughs> CT, like, he is genius. So good. Very, so, very much so. Were you in yeah. CT? Because we, we kind of saw you guys had some tiffs, but mm-hmm. were you guys working together more than what we saw? Or was it really like you had to, like, it seemed like you had to work hard for to get him to work with you? Yeah, I honestly, and again, it made me respect him even more after i didn't expect to have his vote go towards phaedra to help you know my case um when he did that i was like this guy really is trying to like win the game Mm -hmm. he's willing to listen to conversations and if there's you know 
a, a, a point to be made that makes sense enough to him, he, he's going into things with an open mind. Yep. A lot of people, unfortunately, in the cancel didn't have open minds. He was someone that did. And I learned that later on. I was had a little bit of suspicion, you know, when I dropped his the, the lie to him about the, the shield block. And I, I dropped that suspicion quickly after. Um, but he just gained a lot of kudo points. I'm like, no, this guy's willing to listen. He can have his perspective changed. And that's the kind of person that I, I'm excited to play in a game like this with. Yeah. Um, cause you can actually, you know, you can do some stuff. Yeah. He is definitely a gamer, but I will say rewinding a little bit because he was on to you a bit when you changed up from poverty yeah. to Phaedra. And I think that's, that was like the number one question I got from people. It was like, you were so honed in on Parvati. Like she's a traitor. You had everyone else convinced. And then it seemed like, look, and we're watching an edited version, but it seemed like you just kind of flipped and we're like, all of a sudden like, no, let's, let's go for Phaedra. Um, so what was going through your mind with that? Why not just stick with Parvati and get her out and then work on Phaedra maybe the next night? This is such a long explanation. I don't even know if I can <laughs> do it all. Initially, just to give you guys a quick, just to make it make a little bit more sense, okay. my initial idea was to go for Phaedra before Parvati. Okay. And they edited the conversation up in a way that obviously that part was never shown. But I had this plan of having, you know, the whole group that I was close with. When I like went into that room and I was kind of like closing the door on people, mm -hmm. specifically a reason why I didn't want Phaedra in there. I was trying to say, guys, I think we have a way for some a couple more weeks of protection here of let's fake you guys betraying on me. And again, this never made the air, but we were going to go about it where I was going to like hide one night in the castle, like be out of like the conversations. And we were going to have, you know, the crew I was working with, they were going to approach Phaedra and try to fool Phaedra into thinking that they were suspicious of me and that they wanted to turn on me. And we think we have to vote Peter out. The reason we were going to do that was it was going to provide protection for all of us. Phaedra was going to need them for the votes because now she realizes, wait, I have someone now that's a suspect. He's they're turning on him, and it's gonna it's gonna protect me because she's not gonna want to banish me, right? Because she's gonna want to try, or no, she's not gonna want to murder me because she's gonna think that I'm up for banishment. And then we were gonna pull the wool over her eyes at the round table and actually vote for her out. Um, that whole plan never even made the air. It kind of uh, Trishel then was like, no, I don't think we should do that. Let's go Parvati and. Um, and so then we started going that route. Um, I understood Phaedra had a lot of influence in the house okay. and I understood Trishel's points. So, um, well, hold on now. Now I'm getting a little confused with all the different <laughs> hey, look, game, the game plays here. Look, you're confused. We're confused. All we know is, look, you switched from poverty to Phaedra. And I feel like that yeah. was the moment though, like if we're looking at mistakes, I feel yeah. like that was the moment that really kind of gave people who wanted to target you a reason to of like, oh, totally. well, he's switching it up. He's doing this. So, I mean, look, you got Parvati out. That's what matters. Um, and now we'll see if Phaedra gets out. But yeah, that was people's I guess the, biggest yeah, this, question. This is, we, we, the reason we had gone back, it was Phaedra, Parvati, and then back to Phaedra. Trichelle really gave a convincing point is you want to make it to the end. Mm -hmm. with a traitor and you want to hopefully ideally they truly believe that you've lost your suspicion on them and they're not going to get rid of you they're not going to murder you because essentially you're on their side mm -hmm. and in an ideal world you make it to the very end you're able to end the game without that person you know they're a traitor and you can win it as a faithful so i got that i understood it that's why we went the route we did again i totally see how it brought a shit ton of suspicion on me and, you know, you talk about mistakes that that could definitely be considered a mistake. Yeah. Well, you know what? Hindsight's twenty twenty, And if you look, I don't know what's going to happen, but if you do stay in the game, you know what? It doesn't matter. You survived another night. Who cares? Yeah. Um, let's chit chat about this round table because the line from Phaedra, my jaw dropped. I was like, I, I'm, I'm melted. Um, she said something along the lines of, well, Peter, this isn't The Bachelor. I don't have to kiss your ass for a rose. And you, you could see yourself like get a little fired up and I'm over here like, oh my God, those are fighting words. If I was Peter, I'd be like, mic drop. I would have something to say. So we kind of see you fire back. We, you have like your speech to her great speech, by the way. Um, in that Thank moment, you. was there anything you said that we didn't see of you kind of clapping back at that comment? 
Yeah. So quite honest, like F- Phaedra had, had really hit my buttons. She really pissed <laughs> me off. We, we had had a conversation again, this didn't make the air, but she essentially like, she'd always say, Oh, Peter, you don't, you don't talk to me. You never want to have conversations with me. And kept throwing that in my face so I going into the round table I'm like Fader let's go have a conversation so we have a conversation and she immediately starts attacking me saying that you know I'm I'm too I I care too much about this game I'm playing this too hard like I need to chill mm-hmm. I need to calm down um you know the money doesn't mean anything to me like I'll I'm like you know I'll make this money in two weeks and and you care too much about this that oh. hit a chord with me because I'm okay. like this is a lot of money here like yeah. two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Like you may be very blessed and have some great opportunities, but, but I would love the money. To like it's just an honor to win. Like like I would exactly. just want to play to be like, damn, I did a good job. Yeah, it, I mean the pride aspect of that too, and everything, and and she was right. Like I really wanted to win, and so I, it kind of just struck a chord. I didn't appreciate mm. her kind of like trying to put me down in that way, and so I bring that up again at the round table, and um. Yeah, I definitely, I, I took offense to it. Her yeah. kind of like attacking me like that. And, you know, that part wasn't shown, but, um, you know, you got to, you got to give it to her. She does have those hilarious one-liners and, you know, she's good at what she does. And, and she that's that. A, she is a walking one-liner. That is for sure. And I mean, if that's a line, I, no one will forget, but you know what, Peter, you might get justice. You might get justice for that line that she pulled on you, which I think we're all kind of hoping for that to get another trader out, which will just make the game very interesting. But we're going to, oh, actually a question just popped into my head because I'm curious, how long at the round tables do you guys discuss? Like, I don't know. I'm like, John gets a 15 minute speech over here. How does everyone get a 15 minute speech to plead their case? How long do you guys get to discuss before you actually vote on the person? So yeah, round tables are, I mean, that's the most fun part of the entire game. And we would go for about an hour, hour 15. No one quite spoke to the extent that John did, but also (laughs) (laughs) I don't, I don't think anyone could have. He's just just so eloquent with his words. He's so dramatic. Like it, I got to sit next to him, so I'm just like, here we go. Get the yeah. popcorn. It's the John show, and um, he was just so fun to listen to. I love love playing the game with him. Um, but yeah, he and it, you guys, it's kind of missed out because he did that every single night. They kind of oh. just showed it at this round table, but he always had something to say. You know what? Look, he's that's his job. You know, politicians want to speak. Um, okay, so like an hour and fifteen, and then they're like, they're say no more talking. You guys have to vote right now, no matter what. Yeah, wow. absolutely done with the conversation, and and again, that's like you go back to even outside of a roundtable. The second the production comes in, is like reality's over. But like, there's like there no conversation because you're mic'd up the entire time. And so you can't have any more conversation. And so that's why, you know, you always try to make the most of your time as much as possible. I mean, yeah, that puts Uh, pressure on a situation. Ooh, question. Do you guys, I don't know if you can say this, but like in other reality TV, if you break the rules, if you say talk when they don't want you to talk, you get fined. Did you guys get fined? Like, do they? Um, No, no. That's nice of them. Okay. Yeah. No, never had any fines like that. We love um, NBC. Yeah. Let me MTV is like here's ten thousand dollars you owe us for breaking some rules. Wait, um, really? May, okay, not no ten thousand. Like you have to really break rules. But yeah, no, they'll take money out of what they pay you if you do oh, something wow. that they don't want to. So, but also yeah, like thank you, look, NBC. You know, NBC. We're dealing with people who are rational humans. Imagine the people you're dealing with on MTV. They're crazy people. So it's like they kind of have to have more rules, or it would just be the wild, wild west. Um, yeah, kind of shit but, show. Yeah, Peter, don't ever do MTV. It's it's not for you. <laughs> it's not st- stick with NBC. Stick with ABC. Um, but before we get to listener questions, you're getting yeah. to watch all the episodes. You're seeing your gameplay. You're seeing everyone else's. Yours aside, who do you think, as a faithful, just watching it, is playing the best game right now? I think for sure, CT. And again, for the reasons I kind of stated earlier, uh, it's just an incredible job. And and Trishel, she just continued to amaze me with like her accuracy and her just 
again, she has experience like in this kind of world. And I remember like trying to soak up as much info from her and like knowledge, like a sponge as I could, just because she just seemed like she got it. And mm -hmm. she maybe like, you know, Phaedra like try to call her out or stuff for being frantic or whatnot. But I never really thought she got too frazzled. Like she was always able to hold her composure and she had to deal with some stuff through the entire show. Um, but I always remember looking back and I admire her game and, uh, and CT for sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that one. And I also think, I don't know, people seem to be on to Sandra, but up until then, I, you know, she's playing it like low and slow. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see who gets to the end, but let's, I'm going to hit you with some rapid fire questions because I have so many from the let's people, um, the fans. So we're just going to get through as many as we can, as quick as we can. Um, okay. So first off, we've got, we're going to play a little, a little game of sorts. So shield banish murder, kind of like fuck, Mary kill, but like traitor version, um, shield banish murder, who you got, who are you saving? Who are you banishing? Who are you like brutally murdering from the cast? Okay. Oh, oh, not you're you're okay. You're asking me that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Shield. You, yeah, so, you, yeah no. not me. I wasn't with these people. Who no. Do you think? <laughs> Look, Peter, it's early. I got. I have. <laughs> I drank half my coffee. I need to finish. This. I need. A, I need another cup. Okay. Um, my I'm uh killing Phaedra and okay. uh, Shaka. Right. Um, <laughs> I am saving Bergie and. I, I, Bergy and I were, were like Romance. this. You, you, I ended up looking back. I'm like, hmm, was there again? But it would have betrayed a couple other people. But would have there have been a route to take the traitor offer, get them out, and then recruit Bergy in and just completely flip the castle? Wait, would have been I want you Jeff and Bergy Kiss. as traitors. Oh my Did you gosh, imagine? <laughs> it would be. The bromance traders. Oh my, that's what we need. Wow, what could have been that, been that day? Um, and uh, and then banish. Um, I would say poverty. Mm, yeah, poverty and I have like a love hate relationship. Like we're totally cool, but I would I would have had a little smirk banishing her. Yeah. Um, well, that leads me to a, a, a listener question: Is people want to know? Look, their words, not mine, but I also saw, like, there's just so many skits going on of, like, on the internet of you and Parvati and the dynamic. People want to yeah. know, like, was there sexual tension? Was there flirtation? <laughs> or was it just gameplay? No, it was purely, purely gameplay. We we got along exceptionally well. Right from the beginning, she was one of the first people that I really started getting close with. Um, but, like, no, like, right off the bat, she was telling me about, you know, how – a wonderful relationship is and, and uh, about her partner and all that about her daughter. And so it was never like crossing that line. Okay. We just, we just got along well. It's, it was such a funny dynamic, just like watching you guys interact and then watching the interviews of like y'all's back and forth. It really was fun to watch. I think everyone's a little sad that there's like no showmance going on, but guys <laughs> calm down out there. Um, who was the coolest cast member that you did not expect to like? Um, Ekansu. Or no, not that I did not expect to like her. I got along with, well with her super, super well. Okay. Just had no idea who she was. We were like very, very similar um, just as people. And I wish she would have gone a lot farther along. Like I was, I was very bummed when, yeah. when she got murdered in that coffin. Uh, but yeah, Ekansu. we had a really good Soon. friendship. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can answer this one, but I'm also very curious. Do you guys sleep in the castle? We, uh, I, I think you see the scenes, you know, mm, where okay. we're, we're, we're always, we're always by ourselves. Okay. We're not like um, buddy, buddy in any bunkers. Peter, with that answer, I'm going to go ahead and say that you should never be a traitor because you're a horrible liar. We'll just leave it at that, guys. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't say any lie. I said we don't sleep in the same room. Peter. Everything I said was factual. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stick with being a faithful buddy. Um, okay, Morgan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay um, how is the food in the house? People want to know. Delicious. Okay. Uh, it's so good. I always look, dinner was incredible. Uh, and I thought it was cool because it's one thing I never got to do in The Bachelor. We never ate on camera. It was always mm. like a hurry up, get ready in your hotel room, eat and take a couple bites, get changed, and then go to a date and have food in front of you that you want to eat, but you can't. Oh, also awful. cold, but this you got to, you got to just, I, what I loved about traders was 
it was truly just it's all reality. Like you'd pick, get your food, you'd go into this room, you know, talk to these people for however long you wanted. No one told you how long to do this, that. You go to the next room. Like it, you just felt like you were living true reality. Mm, and that's nice, I'm sure, especially coming from The Bachelor where it's so. Look, I'm not going to say it, but I'm going to say it. I think everything about The Bachelor is so forced and so staged and not real. I'm not going to make you answer that because that was like you were on that show, but it just seems forced. And I think that's why people love this show, though. It just seems it's quick. It's to the point. It's it really does feel like you guys are actually living the game. And it's I think it's refreshing also to hear that that's how it was during filming. It, it really was. And I appreciated that. And again, both the shows are so different. So logistically, you have to have one a certain way. Yeah. But that was a benefit of Traders. Hell yeah. Um, person you would never want to do another show with. You can't say Phaedra. <laughs> I would never want to. Um, I mean, it's going to sound mean, but like, I got to probably say <laughs> Sheree. Okay. And I only say that because. Like it hurt so much when I saw her vote for me at this mm. last banishment. Cause I, again, this didn't make the air, but when people were talking about Sheree, I was like defending her. I'm like, Sheree, guys, Sheree can't be a traitor. Anybody that was in that group that knew about the shield block, it, it, it's evidence. You can't be a traitor because you would have known that would have been the, blocked. And I like, I defended her and stuck my neck out. And then it's like, she just, she, I, I I even, I remember she would tell me like she had this tip with Phaedra and like these fights and all that. And, and I, I just didn't get it. So yeah. it like, it hurt. So I guess uh, I have to think for those them, reasons. Them housewives are going to stick together. I guess that's what we learned. Yeah. Um, people want to know, even though I think you already answered this very clearly, how's you and Bergie? Are you guys still friends? You talk often. Hell yeah. He just texted me. I just saw his slide come down on my phone. Precious. Um, we uh, we're trying to do some uh, lake trips this summer. He's out Cute. in Mini, and I uh, have him come out to New York. Going to see everyone in um, in March here. We're filming the reunion, so it'll be oh, good to see him. Oh my gosh, but, that'll be yeah. fun. Okay, guys, um, we'll have to stay tuned for the reunion. All right, more listener questions. Oh, this was a top one, and it has nothing to do with the traders, but I'm going to ask it anyways. What's your current relationship status, Peter? <laughs> I am single. Okay. I am. Uh, I'm very single. And I'm okay with that. I, you know, I'm having a great time right now and life's really fun. I'm enjoying it and not rushing anything. We love a single, independent, happy, living life man. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. Did you actually notice Phaedra's eye twitching? Because I think this was all made up. Everyone was like, her eye twitches. Um, Did you actually notice it? Honestly, no. I, I didn't. I will say kind of fun little stuff that didn't make it. Again, so I, I thought it was suspicious with, with Dan calling her out. But two things that proved to me that Phaedra, one really, that she was a traitor, was Parvati, like this happened like a day after. Parvati had called me a bloodhound. And she was the only person that had ever called me a blood. She's like, you're such a bloodhound, Peter, blah, blah, blah. And then the very next day, Phaedra had a fruity and slip and called me the exact same mm. term. And seeing it in the turret, they both were talking about me as bloodhound. And so that was obviously a word that was fresh in her mind. And I'm like, wait, you just said the same word that fate or poverty call it on me the other day. That's super sus. And then I remember at the flame, I was so pissed that we didn't get to banish a trader that night. Like that, I was so excited. We were going to get poverty out and then put heat on Phaedra to get some protection. Anyways, Phaedra got really emotional when mm. Sheree lit her flame and like really emotional. And I don't know why, but the way I saw it was that's someone that the weight and the gravity of being a traitor right now is finally getting to the breaking point where mm. she just got a really beautiful gesture given to her by a friend and she knows she's going to have to betray that friend later in the game. And that's the emotion that I saw. And I was like, she's a traitor. Peter, Peter, I am wildly impressed with your gaming brain. <laughs> wildly impressed. I'm Look, you did great on The Bachelor, but that was not the right show for you. You 
belong on one of these gaming shows, which leads me to my next question. People want to know, obviously we're, we're manifesting a trader season three appearance from you. We're hoping for that, but what would be like your dream show beyond traders to go on? I I was just talking with Nick and I I would love to do special forces. Mm. I just think the ability to like push myself to the extreme extreme would be incredible. Like I remember I wanted to, when I was young, I wanted to be going to the air force and, and be a fighter pilot. And um, so this would maybe be like the next best thing to like really push myself and test myself and see what, you know, what I'm made of. Um, I would love to do something like that. Um, amazing race sounds so fun to me. Uh, a dream. Dance with the stars. That would be fun as hell. That'd be Peter, how are your dance moves? I, I'm very confident in my dance moves. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if, it, right. if it's country or line dancing, I got you. Hey, look, I'm in Nashville. You tell me when and where. We'll actually oh, put, yeah. that, we'll put that to the test. Um, I'm actually horrible, but like I'm good at two stepping. That is the extent of my dance experience. But like that's fine. Look, okay. I, su- I, su- I got a little dance- swing dance in me. Okay, yeah. Well, I look, I've got. I'll break up the cowboy boots. We'll have it. We we'll go. have a grand old time. Um, well, I hope to see you on one of those. Um, special forces though, like you're actually nuts. I'm like. <laughs> people who want to put themselves, I just, I, the only thing I've seen from special forces is I've seen Tyler Cameron projectile vomiting more than yep. I have ever seen someone throw up in my life. Um, so I was like, yeah, not that for was me. Brutal. Not for me. Yeah. I, don't, I, I, I don't. know it sounds crazy, but I love making myself uncomfortable and pushing myself. Okay. So we'll see. All right. We'll see. Um, what did you think about Alan as a host? The best. And That's awesome. What I love about him, I just, we just, after the press day in New York, we got to go out to his club, club coming in New York and got to obviously just in a chill environment and talk and get to know him. But during filming, he, you got to respect the guy so much, such like a, um, just takes his craft so seriously Mm -hmm. and literally never broke character. Like the Alan you see as a host. He like we're in between takes and there was maybe a 30 second little small combo where like we were kind of talking just as like normal human beings. But other than that, he just he stayed such a method actor, stayed in that role and never broke it. And it made it even more fun to like really buy into it. But and that's what makes him so good is I really don't think that this show would be what it is without him as a host. Like he just 100%. really makes it. Oh, my God. He's I want to meet this man. He just seems so fun. Um, how long Such was cool filming? Um, I know you said long days. You film an episode in a day. So how long were you guys actually there at the castle? Yeah, we almost every episode was in a day. Like the first episode was over like four days. And then you'd have like break days. So total filming was just under a month. Okay. Wow. That's actually longer than I was thinking. But Okay. So a month yeah. in the castle. We'll see how long you're actually there. Um, my yeah. last question for the rapid fire listener questions. People want to know, making a little bachelor reference, you have one final rose. Who are you giving it to on the Traders cast? You can't, okay, I, okay, I, you can't say Bergie because we all know that you're going to pick him with your little bromance. <laughs> so taking Bergie out of the equation, who's getting the final I'm, rose? I'm giving my final rose to Phaedra. Peter, that's a no, horrible I'm answer. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I am giving my final rose to Lala. Okay, fair. Al- fair. Alan's dog. I oh, she was adorable. Okay, okay, no, okay. You know what, Peter? I'm actually going to accept that because dogs can get the final rose, and we all know that you're actually giving it to Bergie, your BFF. So, like, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll accept that answer. Um, well, Peter, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I cannot wait to see what happens next week. I'm hoping that you're around. Um, is there anything else you want to add for the, the listeners out there? I mean, yeah, just thank you guys, you know, for all the support. I'm glad you guys have been enjoying it. Um, I truly had like the, the best time ever. I was a kid in the candy store playing the whole game and hope you guys enjoyed it. And, um, Yeah, thanks for the support. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, shoot me a message if you think that Peter or Phaedra is going to stay. We'll tune in for another episode on Thursday. I can't freaking wait. And besties, I'll see everyone next week. Bye.
Thanks so much for listening to the Your Internet Best Friend podcast. It's been real. It's been fun. And I will see everyone here next week. In the meantime, do all the podcast things. Like, subscribe, give me a five-star review if you please. And catch up with me on social media at Morgan Lee Willette. Bye, besties.